Welcome back to a little bit of Hardcore Grim Dawn. Questy Sparks, Disease, Lightning, that sort of thing. Uh, just getting back into this, been away from this character for a little while. I have been uh, have been grinding my way up um, with a Ritualist in Hardcore. I'm about level, level 65, 67, something like that. Uh, just to unlock a little bit more content, try to get access to some of the um, merits so that I can start Hardcore characters at, you know, Ultimate or, or Elite. Um, but in the meantime, you might be wondering, why am I up here, not near the spawn point, next to the smuggler? Well, that's because we've got some items. And if I remember correctly from last time, we actually had some items that we might want to wear. At least one. And the one that I was remembering was this here. We got one of these uh, demolitionist eyes, um, overseer eyes. And it's got a lot of lightning and electrocute on there. 5% spirit. Those are good stat upgrades as well. And 10% casting speed. Can't argue with it. And as you can see right now, I'm still using this runebound archive of binding. Which I don't need because I'm not really using much in the way of pets anymore. I mean, I've got a raven kicking around, but I probably don't really need that either. Um, so we're going to be setting ourselves up with this. And the other thing we're going to take a look at, now that we're level 20, I can't remember if it was 20 or 30 that I was going to start looking at relics. Um, but I think we're going to start looking at relics. Uh, so let's just take a little look at this. Um, most of the stuff we're not going to need. Um, we do have our main hand right now, which is, again, not really contributing anything to us as a build. All right, so this here, I mean, if you look at what I'm wearing, th these aren't build specifically good, but they're just good. They just give damage and, and health. So those ones I'm going to wear, but I can't wear yet. Not high enough level. Uh, these guys right here, um, we've got some elemental damage. They are an increase on what I have. Uh, and they also can launch lightning orbs on attack. So these are also going to go into the build. So we're just going to put them over here so we don't forget about them. Uh, these right here, um, they would give me an extra 1% move speed and a little bit less slow resistance. It's such a trade-off. I don't really care about these. We're going to stow those in our item assistant. Uh, the malformed effigy, not build related. Uh, this one here, once again, these are actually quite good, but not build related. So those ones are going to go. These tomes are going to go. Uh, this one here... No good. No good. I mean, they're going to be good for something, but they're not really that interesting for what I'm doing right now. Now, this one here, if it wasn't such a shit helm, I would wear it because it does have a little bit of lightning damage on it, but it's just too crap. Um, we're not even going to throw that in the bin. Uh, this one here, on the other hand, let's see, what, what do we have? Yeah, Explorer's Cover. All right, well, this one I'm going to keep around. I'm going to keep that in mind, basically. Um, we also got this uh, Slith Primal Ring. Uh, again, that's not really going to help us too much. It doesn't really have anything in particular that I need. So that one's going in the bin as well. All right, so there we go. We're clearing things out. This guy is immediately going into our build. So we're just going to equip that right off the bat. And then we'll see what we can... Uh, is this worth saving? Mm, level 14. You know what? Honestly, I'm just going to sell that. All right, so let's just stow some of our add-ons here just to clear the inventory properly. Crafting mats, all that sort of thing. All right, and, and as you can see here, I, I have been busy. I've been a busy little bee on other characters, um, getting my crafting mats up. And this is gonna mean that as soon as we actually do have enough levels to work on um, getting ourselves some, some relics and stuff crafted, we're actually gonna be able to do that. But one thing that I do know is that I also snagged an item uh, earlier on that's going to allow me to have a basically a free relic this early in the game. So through the magic of uh, pause, um, I'm going to go and get it. Imagine my embarrassment when I dug through my item stash only to find that I've misplaced that relic somewhere. I probably have it on a different character or something stupid like that. So, with no further ado, we will pull this out, which is one thing that I did find. Uh, this here is 
a useful upgrade to me. Um, you can see here that it grants me the Lightning Nova on attack. Um, that's really good because I proc attack things all the time, if you remember. Um, well, you probably remember. You might have just watched the last episode. Um, I just have been away a while. But basically, my bloody pox ticks, they can, uh, they can proc this. So what we're going to do is we're going to equip ourselves like that. We'll just throw that in the bin. Um, we didn't come up with a relic, so that's going to be something that we jump onto next. Now, let's choose what we're going to put on these two new items. So we've got a new main hand and a new off hand. Um, I do not need ether weapons. I wouldn't mind a little bit of bleed damage, and I wouldn't mind lightning damage. So we could just go back with this. It gives us a little bit of lightning. I don't know whether I don't know whether I love that. I mean, let's see here. Um, let's see here. Is there anything that's more interesting? See this one. This one technically does give me bleed damage, but by the same token, that impaling weapons is simply not useful for me at all. So that wouldn't be much good. Um, additional poison damage. Once again, it's not on the cards. And we've got cold damage there. So realistically, at this point in the game, I am really limited on what I can slap onto my weapons here. Um, so I think... Um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and... Well... Yeah, no, that's also crap. Alright, well, I'm going to go ahead and just put on... I guess the bleed dam... Well... Whatever. Lightning damage, just do it up. Okay, so that kits that out. And now I guess the one thing we can do is just take a quick look here. Um, once again, all of these are cross account. So you can see I've got a lot of recipes here. Um, this is because the, um, basically my hardcore account is building this up and it's, it's across all the different characters that I have. So my level 67 character, all the recipes that I found on that character are also in here. Uh, now, I guess what we can do is just kind of dig through here and see. Um, sometimes, like, see, this here would be pretty good. It's level 18. I can build it right off the bat. Um, possibly no reason not to. I don't know if there's anything that would be any, any more use to me. Um, a lot of the ones that I can build right now. I mean, Sanctuary is pretty good because it's actually quite protective. Uh, but for most of these, I don't really think so. So I think what I'll do is I'll just take um, Equilibrium. It's going to give me a little bit of move speed, which is always nice. Um, it's going to give me a little bit more Ellie resist, which you can see that I need, and a little bit of elemental damage. So let's just throw one of these together really quick and populate that relic slot with one of these low-level relics. And with all that out of the way, we are actually ready to get going. So... Um, Oh, and I don't look quite as ridiculous now that I'm not carrying around that dude's leg anymore. See, look at this. I'm starting to vaguely look like a lightning caster. And you know, to be totally honest, we could probably make this look a little better because this is also cross-character. So your um, cosmetics here are what you pick up across all of your characters. Oh, man, so many of the hats just look ridiculous. Eh, I don't know about that either. And maybe something simple, just a hood. That could work. Um, let's see, do we have anything in the shoulder pads? Oh man, there we go. How much higher level than I actually am does that look? All right, let's see if we can do something with gauntlets to match that. Hmm. I mean, that's pretty similar. It's a slightly different, uh, slightly different blue. These ones here are cold oriented, but. That's maybe not ideal. Um, yeah, that's a little bit... Mm, it's maybe too over the top, right? I think we could maybe go... Uh, just go with something a little simpler. Chest armor, that's going to be a big one here. Oh, if only, the, if only those were blue, that would look a lot better. Let's see. What are these? Eastern robes? Astral robes. They look pretty good. Yeah, okay, I'm kind of on board for that. These boots, they don't necessarily match very well, but we could just switch them to black like that. Some black buckled boots. That matches pretty well. 
All right, the pants, same general idea. Let's just try to make them match a little better. Um, there we go. There we go. Helmet is always an outlier. I find that like they just don't really look very good. I'm going to leave my weapons and stuff as well because I think they actually match fairly appropriately. I don't know if I have a, I don't know if I have a really cool, uh, that's kind of cool. Um, I mean, it's kind of on target for color. That one's small and out of the way. I actually, I dig that. Okay, let's not spend too much time here. There we go. Look at, look up. Oh, I said, look at that. I actually look the part now. All right, so let's go and see if we remember how to use this character. I do, like I said, I do still have this little asshole around. I don't really know that he's that much good, but let's find out where we were in the game. All right, look at this. We're all the way up in the warden's cellar. We're getting close to that first big fight where I'm actually going to find out whether or not this is working. But I think that might not even be this episode. I think that's probably going to be next episode because we do have a little bit of work to do before we get in there to see Warden Krieg. All right. Um, hopping down these little things. Okay, again, this is a don't stand in the bad type of scenario here. Okay, I mean, you know, this is vaguely going okay. As soon as I kind of remember what my skills are that I'm actually rotating, this gets a little easier, but oh, there we go. Look at the bleed do its work. All right, we're rolling again. Questy Sparks is back on the case here. Let's fucking do this. Yeah, like I say, I've been I've been grinding away with my other character. It's a ritualist, you know, and I'm doing sort of a I mean, normally with a ritualist, you just want to have, you know, the, the swarm of pets. And I'm doing uh, sort of an alternate style of that, which is to uh, not necessarily have the whole swarm of pets. You have um, just the big pets. And then I'm starting to get into the gear now. I, I built one in softcore. It's, I have them at, at 100. And basically it's really cool because I don't have the whole pet swarm, but I have a bunch of uh, pets that are generated by my attacks. Uh, this is, this is risky business. This is risky, but th this could be we're re-rolling real soon. Uh, on the other hand, you only live once, right? Okay, let's, let's try this. Let's try this. I keep forgetting, I've been playing my other character so much, I keep forgetting that I don't have a movement skill on this character, and that's probably going to get me in a little bit of trouble at some point. Oh, like right here, like right here. Okay, yeah, see, we're, we're immediately in trouble there. We're immediately in trouble. So we're just going to try to, like, we're in much less threat here than we are in that room there. See, see, this was a really, this was a really dumb idea. This was really, really dumb. And I want to just be very careful. I can be maybe a little bit more aggressive um, when my flasks are in, are cooled down, but I definitely don't want to be stranded up here. See there, I just went into cool down again. Yeah, this is a this is a tremendously hostile situation. I'm not giving up on it. I'm not giving up on it, but I'm just gonna clear some clear some maneuvering room here. Ooh, okay. So that got reasonably close. Reasonably close there. Um we did get some kills here though. You can see that the uh, probably the bloody pox was doing some work in the background there. Um, this is probably a bad thing here. Like we've probably got some enemies that have pretty good resistance to what I'm trying to do to kill them. Um, looks like we got some infighting as well, which is kind of nice. Okay, there's another target down. Let's keep bringing it. Okay, it looks like we're getting them. There we go. All right, that was that was sketchy as fuck. Oh, we did get a blue out of that, so I mean that's vaguely worth it. Let's see if this one breaks into anything good. Uh, no, no, it does not. But that's okay. I mean, those are always good for a little shot of XP anyway. 
All right, so one of the things about this area of the game here, um, you know, if this is your first time seeing the game, is is this is where it really starts up on hidden secrets. I mean, we've already found a few of those coming in here, but uh, there are a lot down in these dungeons here. Send them some lightning to have fun with. Man, I, I have a feeling like these storm totems, once I really get them stacked and I get my I get my numbers up, I feel like they are just going to obliterate the board. Like they already feel pretty good. But I'm sure there's a lot more growth to go. You know, it, it has really been uh, really been fucking with me here, not having my movement skill. So on my ritualist, I have um, like a leap slam type of ability that I basically just use to sort of traverse the battlefield. And in, in this game, movement skills are not uh, like, you know, if you're used to Path of Exile or something like that and sort of the, you know, getting the zoom going and stuff like that, you might be a little bit. It'll take you some adjustment to get used to how movement skills and stuff work in this game. Because they're not sort of as universally, you know, get out of dodge kind of as they are in Poe. Because they sort of, um, another another uh, streamer I was watching kind of explained how they calculate. And uh, essentially what they do is they plot sort of a like a walking path, like they path to the destination. And if that total path is traversable and within the range of the movement skill then you'll end up there right so for example if you're at the bottom of some stairs and you want to jump to the top it'll path as if you were running to the top and if that's in range then it'll jump but one of the things that you do run into every once in a while is that your path can actually be obstructed i think by enemies so if there's a way to run around an enemy and get to a certain, you know, to the point that you want to jump to, you'll just jump to it and it'll act very much like a movement skill would in Path of Exile. But there's other times when you simply don't have an available path and so the skill just kind of jumps you into some giant enemy's chest or something like that and you end up getting your ass handed to you. It can be pretty brutal at times, especially in hardcore. So, you know, I have to train myself not to rely on it quite as much as I have been. All right, so I'm just gonna drop a little more spirit in here. And um, this is my first time opening my skills page since I got back um, into the game here. So I think it's probably gonna be a case of figuring out what the heck we were working on. Uh, and I would say pretty obviously, there's a lot going on here in the shaman side of things. And quite probably, hey, what's, what does this do? Uh, oh yeah, the vitality conversion. Okay, I think what we want to do is just sort of start stacking this up. Obviously, our other option is to, you know, stack up wasting, a like get up to wasting and, and stack this up, which I think we will want to do eventually. But right now, I'm not really thinking that's going to be ideal. I think these totems are probably going to be slightly better. Um, like if you look at if you look at how these are building up, you could get a couple of them out at any given time. Um, they affect up to four targets and they have a lot of range. So I think these are probably going to be good because we already have a lot of points in Bloody Pox. So I'm just going to go on and stack this a little bit more. You can see the damage is starting to rise into really meaningful levels. Um, and it will scale more as I get more items that are relevant. But it's already starting to look pretty good. You know, that's that's good. I mean, obviously, we're gonna we're gonna continue for a while to struggle with elites and and single targets with a lot of health, because we are sort of built around this idea of, of you know hitting AOEs, but that will come with time. The damage will come with time. And if we end up in a situation where I feel like we're still having you know trouble, we could always respec into something a little bit different. I mean, that's that's the joy of the game is that. If this ain't working, we'll just do a crazy conjure or pet build or something like that. But I would really like to, uh, I would really like to get this going effectively. Um, I am kind of dithering around a little bit here. I probably don't, probably don't need to spend that much time clearing this area. There's not much in here. Um, it's sort of in the upcoming area of the dungeon where we have a lot of secrets and, and a lot of loot that we can get our hands on. So I'm gonna press ahead um, 
This is a surprisingly large basement, though. I, I don't know about the warden. I'm not too sure. This is like... I guess suspicious is the uh, the way to say it. All right, here we go. Next level up, even more suspicious. There's like roads and shit under here. Probably not up to code. Probably didn't have permitting from the town authority to do this. All right, there we go. Okay, definitely, I can tell that this is gonna take a little bit of work to get this feeling, you know, smooth. Um, but man, I can sure feel the potential. I can sure feel the potential in this. Yeah, like, look at that, right through the wall. I love it. Just unfair. Just unfair. There we go. All right, all right. Let's tidy this up. Bash it. Relatively useless with my sword, but it always feels good to try. All right. All right, all right, that ain't bad. It's a, it's a transition, like whenever you go from a pet build, I, I'm a huge fan of pet builds in games, it doesn't really matter which game, well no, it does matter which game it is, it's got to be a non-shit pet build game, but in this game it, it's basically, I would argue, one of the strongest in terms of how fun it is to play pet builds, and so this one, a lot of my characters are pet builds, especially my high level ones, just because they're just a lot of fun to develop right like watching your horde of terrors just roll into the enemy and crush them is kind of gratifying so um i've played a few of them and it is a little bit of a thing to get back to like the the biggest thing for me is not that i'm not clearing fast right like when you're coming through here building a pet setup you know, you're still early game. Like, it's still hard to get your pets going properly. You know, they go down a lot unless you're playing a Ritualist, you know? Like, I would just have this now if I was playing Ritualist. Just be getting the ability to keep my pets alive for a couple of minutes. So, it's not the clear speed. It's the fact that you are the object of attention all the time for the enemy, right? Like with the pet build, at least you can kind of stand in the background with a clipboard and a cup of coffee and just kind of watch the fight develop. You know, whereas with this, it's like, nope, it's all me. If the enemy wants to, you know, it's like, who is this asshole? And what is he doing with these lightning totems? It's like, I have to be the one who fields that question. It's tougher. And that, that's why I would say, like, if you're first getting into hardcore, I mean, hell, if you're first getting into the game at all, you know, just consider building a necromancer and then tacking something onto it. It's a lot of fun, but it's also a little bit more forgiving, right? You don't necessarily have to be as on it to survive. I mean, this is still babby mode when it comes to starting, though, because as I say, I don't have the uh, merits yet, so I'm still not able to... Um, start the game from a higher difficulty level or anything like that uh which obviously throws up a lot more challenge early in the game when you don't really have any abilities or anything like that sorted out um you know it it just gets rougher if the enemy can actually hurt you which at this level they still can right later levels not so much um you know going to elite from like basically what you want to do is run through uh the first act of the game as quick as you can and not the first act but you know like one playthrough right like get to get to kathan slap him around a little bit shove his tentacles back in the void uh <laughs> shove his tentacles back in the void you know what i mean um and then basically just go straight to elite and do it again and then once you're in elite you know, that's when I would start looking at stuff like Ashes of Malmouth and Forgotten Gods, because realistically, the payoff when you're when you're sort of rolling around at veteran, it's just not great. Like the difference between, uh, you know, veteran and elite 
And then the difference between elite and ultimate when it comes to what you get looting and stuff like that is just oh, it's so night and day. Like at ultimate, it's just showers of purples, right? It's awesome. Anyway, uh, all right. What, what were we doing? I really don't remember. I remember that we'd gone maybe for a uh, bleed first off. And I think we'd aced that exactly, didn't we? Yeah, so we had exactly the right number of points. So now I think we probably want to start looking towards getting a little bit of lightning on the board as well. Now, this is something obviously we're going to get, right? Like it says it on the tin. We're going to want to get that, but we obviously need to get some other stuff first so that we can actually do it. Um, now this is much more in the, uh, in our range and you can see it's giving us frost burn as well. So that's not ideal for us because it's kind of like, we only need one of those. So if you look down here, this one is maybe a little bit easier. It's giving us less total damage, but it's giving us elemental damage. Hmm. Yeah, not too sure. This one, this one's pretty pet focused. I don't know. I don't really necessarily want that. And this might seem very haphazard, right? I think to a Poe player, you'd be looking at this and being like, what are you doing? You're just poking around like you don't even know what you want. Um, to which I would say, yeah, it doesn't really matter, right? Because you know that you can change it. So it's not a huge problem, to be honest. Um, but what we should do is probably unlock another color here now we don't have much lightning available out here that's all up here it's all blue but if we want to get to this we're going to need some purple as well which is more down in this area here and some of this is actually you know kind of useful for us even though it's not lightning so this will give us three of those purples it's giving us some good resistance. It's giving us some energy. This is a bunch of good stuff. This will this will give us some Ellie damage. I'm actually just going to grab this and it'll give us three purple, which will open this up, right? And we can take it right now. So we're just going to open that up. When we complete that, we'll have uh, most of the purple we need. I suppose I should figure out what that is. Most of the ascendant we need for this requirement here. And then we'll maybe tuck into the blue and we'll see what we can do with that. And maybe what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of a closer look at it when I'm uh, offline. Um, just so that I don't have to sit there and stare at my screen for 20 minutes and just, you know, torment anyone crazy enough to be watching this with that. These are another little annoying enemy. You can actually fuck yourself up pretty bad when you're playing like a melee build with like, you know, you, when you like rock a ring of steel or something like that, that um, kills everyone around you at once and they all explode in a fireball. Really annoying. I mean, nowhere near as annoying as some of the, uh, some of the shit where they just drop like a puddle of acid on the ground or something like that, which, you know, annihilates you. It's sort of funny, especially when you're playing with someone else, um, but even when you're playing a pet build and just not knowing like, okay, there's a bubbling pool of acid at my feet, but I can't tell whether that was my blight fiend or whether it's the enemy and it's going to melt my ass off. It can be very alarming not to know. There's just basically no Wemyss labels attached to any of this stuff. My little storm hound. I think he pops up when I get hit. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's the uh, I think that's the scenario. All right, so let's keep pushing on here. Like I say, this basement is a little bit carried away if you ask me. All right, I feel as if we're gonna yeah. See, look at this. Look at this. This is somebody who's played for 800 hours knows that there's gonna be a huge spawn wave behind them. That, of course, being pretty much all I've picked up over 800 hours. But oh, look at those lightning bolts coursing around. I'm feeling it. Now, problem is this guy's not really feeling it because I think he's pretty much immune to my lightning. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Look at that. Arcing around. Beautiful.
These crystal formations don't seem to bleed very well either. Consider me shocked. Okay, so we did pick up a level where we were in there as well. Um, and we have sort of, as you can see, we, we put a little bit in everything just to get our, um, our requirements up. But we've been kind of bouncing between physique and spirit. Um, which I think is not going to be a terrible idea for a while yet. Um, just so that we can kind of keep getting our health growing as well. Uh, we're going to continue to stack points into this for a little while longer. Just to get those numbers up. We're almost at a thousand damage now on those um, those lightning bolts. So they're going to start doing a fair amount of damage here. Yeah, see, couple, they're about like two hitting. I have a couple of items squared away as well that allow me to uh, have a couple more of them out at any given time. So I'm obviously going to have to get my skill recharge way down. That's actually going to be something that's uh, pretty vital on this build, maybe more so than most. Um, most, Well, most that I've been doing anyway, um, is just getting my skill recharge down so that I can um, get a lot of these things deployed. Because I think the item I have, it gives me an, either an extra two or an extra three. But as you can see, like I can't even get the three that I have allotted um, out right now because I just don't have that good a like that good a skill recovery. Um, so that's something I'm gonna want to work on. Keep an eye out for items that can affect that. Once again, the the collection in the uh, item assistant is growing, so I'm probably going to have some good buildable options in there as well. Oh, we're getting close to the laboratory. I can smell the science already. And then just through that is Warden Krieg, waiting for me to come in and electrocute his dumb ass. Probably tap that up. All right, a little bit more lore. Very nice for me that he's not particularly organized when it comes to keeping tabs on his diaries. Man, I'm always impressed by how hard that Twin Fangs ability actually taps people as well. Especially given that I basically only have it to sort of return a little bit of extra health. And it actually <laughs> it rocks people pretty good. Yeah, those those overseer eyes are really. Um, again, I'm not reading this stuff. Was, at this point, I'm basically recapping for myself. But I've actually I've been meaning to I've been meaning to go online and download one of the compilations that you know fan fan assembled compilations of the game's lore. I feel like it's going to be a good read. I mean, these guys went ham writing considering that it's just an ARPG. They got a little bit carried away on the lore writing. All right, we're making good time here. We'll be with the warden shortly. But when I say that, I do mean, having just glanced at the clock, that we'll be with the warden shortly next time. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is just record a couple episodes on the go here. We did just get to that waypoint, so um, this is maybe a reasonable place to cut off. And I think what I'll do is probably just pick up right here in the next episode. So, I'll see you then. And uh, hope you enjoyed running around electrocuting things that were melting from plague.